to remove the old extruder, there's four screws on the back. So you take a hex wrench and remove those four screws. I've already removed two, so you'll just see me remove two here instead of four. But uh, you can see where they would they would go. There's two at the, two at the top here, and then two at the bottom here. We'll take those out, and now we're going to swap out. We're actually going to remove this, this um, support plate here too. So in order to do that, there's screws on the back side, but you can't access them without removing this whole plate from the the bearing block. So we got So we're just going to remove the plate from the bearing block here. And the screws don't want to lose the screws. Drop them out here. Actually, sorry, we're not even going to use these screws again. So. These are the screws that need to be removed here. Just get the block off. Okay, so now we're going to put this block back up on here. And you can really put the block, the block could potentially go either way but I think but I think this this side with the hole is the one at the t is the top hole especially since it aligns it lines up there's a hole here and you could put a screw through there that goes all the way through that passes through that hole and then fits into a the slot back here and it would it would keep it it would only allow you to move this up and down within a within a short range without escaping completely so it kind of limit Kind of, would kind of limit the, the range of motion there if you had the screw passing all the way through. On the other, the first one, the previous one I did, if I lined up this, all the screw holes, the problem was that that hole didn't line up at the top with this one perfectly. I had to drill out the piece of sheet metal a little bit. So the, the, the Titan extruder comes with a bag of parts, and inside the bag of parts is uh, some screws. This is, I think, this is a this is a cable to reverse the stepper motors if the stepper motors are going the wrong way. And then there's some screws, tiny little screwdriver, and the correct hex wrench for these screws. If I mount this here. I'm just going to put these screws into a into the holes temporarily and see if that top hole aligns. But if it doesn't, I'm just going to go ahead and drill it out a little bit because I like the idea of putting that screw in from the back to to restrain the uh, the motion of the print head. So let's see if this works. That screw. It really doesn't look like it aligns well at all. I can actually try it from this side, it might be a little bit easier. So it really pushes the part down, it does interfere, so I'm going to drill it out a little bit, it doesn't hurt, it won't, drilling it out just a tiny bit even it doesn't make it irreversible in terms of like going back to the old extruder. So what I want to do is I want to protect this area from from debris when I drill and still very slowly.
least I don't damage anything. I can pull this out. Dump the dump the shavings down on there. Pull this out so I don't scatter shavings everywhere. And now that hole should be fine to fit. So, okay, got the screws here. Let's start the screws. Start one of the screws. Keep dropping screws. Sometimes it helps put on the hex wrench. Start one of the screws here, through here, and that helps me see see it when I'm putting it into the the bearing block because it's kind of difficult otherwise it's, you're going in there blind and now it's all mostly lined up so it'll be easier to hit that second hole there we go okay so just leaving them loose for right now I'm going to take one of these longer screws and put it in from the back side and I had to widen this hole quite a bit, so it's probably not something that Hicktop recommends doing. <clears throat> and just first loosely tighten them all. Look to see that it's fairly level. Okay, loose tighten, then you can tighten it more. To opposite corners. Now you can put this dovetail mount into there and use a small hex wrench on the side here to loosen these hex screws it doesn't go in. There we go. And so now, now with the, without that screw driven in the back, you can just you freely move this up and down. And if you put that screw in, then it's going to limit the amount of the amount of travel to just that distance, which is plenty. So just it's kind of cool, so it doesn't drop all the way when you loosen the set screws. I like that. Even though Hicktop doesn't show that in the instructions, it's a nice feature. And then you can tighten these set screws kind of temporarily because the next step you're going to have to do is to set the level for both extruders individually. And it looks good. So the last step is just to connect these cables back in here. Make sure the power's out when you power's off when you connect those cables. There's probably going to be I haven't checked into that yet, but there's probably going to be some settings that have to be changed in the controller. Maybe some I don't know if some firmware updated or not, but definitely some settings, some extrusion settings that are that that are going to have to be changed because the extruder is now running it. Uh, through the gearbox as a, a step-down ratio, so you'll have to increase the number of steps uh, for the same amount of feeding. 